Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel and today we are going to be talking about how to purify water during a long-term emergency. But before we get too deep into that, if you're new to the channel, this is your first time here, welcome. And if you've been by here before, welcome back. If you don't mind, if you haven't done so already, if you would go ahead and hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, and also if any point during the video you think you're getting value, you learned something new, or maybe you just never thought of something that I mentioned before, go ahead and hit that like button as well. So let's get started. Every prepper should have a water plan and that's going to kind of have two main parts. The first one is going to be water storage, water that you keep at your house or your maybe your bug out location that's there and ready to go if you should need it. And then the second part of that water plan is going to be how are you going to purify additional water as you need it. And both of those are equally important. You can't really have one without the other if you want to be prepared for a wide range of potential situations. Purifying water during a long-term emergency is going to look a little bit different than purifying water if you have something like say a boil water notice or you go a couple days without water because something like a main froze and burst or things like that. And one reason why is if there is a long-term situation where no sort of treatment facility is up and running, that means that you're going to be more likely to encounter things like chemicals in your water supply, bacteria, and even viruses. There's more of a chance that human waste will be introduced into waterways and things like that because most people, they do not understand how to take care of their waste in a long-term emergency. So they're going to do things like um, you know, dump buckets of the stuff down into storm drains in front of their house and that's going to wind up in the same creek that most people are dipping into to get water out of. And that kind of brings me to my next point. Unless you have something like a rainwater harvesting system, which I strongly recommend everybody have, that's something I really want to put into my house and when I do, y'all will see that but you're not going to be as selective about the water that you get so you're going to need to purify whatever it is that you can get your hands on just so that you and your family don't dehydrate and die and if you're in a situation like that i think the best way to go about it is to have a multi-stage water purification kind of system or procedure and i have a berkey a lot of you guys have berkeys and they're great. I use mine every day and it will it is a big part of my water plan should a long-term emergency take place. But there are kind of some reasons why you might not want to rely on something like that 100%. And it's not because it's a bad product. It's a great product. Like I said, I love mine. But like any other uh, kind of piece of equipment, it is going to be somewhat prone to failure. Maybe prone is the wrong word, but their point is there is a chance that it could fail. And historically, there have been problems with the main part of the Berkey filtering element coming unglued from the little plastic base. So that that is something to think about. Maybe it's not necessarily a reason not to buy it, but you do need to be aware of potential weaknesses within your equipment so they don't bite you in the rear. So first reason to have a multi-stage purification system or procedure is so that you aren't going to be messed over if something like mechanical or some piece of equipment fails on you. And then the second reason is each one of the stages that I'll mention is going to be good about removing kind of a specific thing. And don't get me wrong, it can remove more than one thing. Each stage can and there will be some overlap, but each stage kind of specializes in kind of different things, and that'll help make sure that as many contaminants get removed as possible. And the third reason to have a multi-stage water purification system or procedure is so that, let's say you do have a Berkey, and it's something you use every day, it's something you're gonna rely on in the long term. If you are pouring pond scum directly into that Berkey, or nasty water, whatever the case is, you are gonna clog up those filters very quickly. And of course there's pre-filtering, but what I'll talk about will take care of that as well. And also, if you're using that in your house, like what we are right now, 
your kitchen is going to start to smell like pond scum. So this will help kind of make your, your primary water filter, and in this case, if it's a Berkey, a little bit more hygienic to use and help it last longer all at the same time. So the first stage in my family and I's water purification plan is to use some sort of Sawyer filter. And the purpose of this stage is to remove virtually all bacteria and protozoa, sediment, and microplastics from the water. And if you're not familiar with Sawyer filters, they're very inexpensive. They use hollow fiber membrane technology, which is similar to what's used for like kidney dialysis. And it'll remove contaminants down to 0.1 microns, which is pretty dang tiny. And one good thing about them is that they're easy to clean. You can use either the, if it includes a syringe or the spigot adapter to back flush them to get rid of kind of any larger debris or contaminants that's in there like sediment so that it'll restore the filtering rate of the device and also you can use a diluted bleach solution to clean it out so little microbes don't grow in the filter when you are not using it and there's a couple different ways that you can go about using a Sawyer filter my family and I since we already have one we're just going to use the tap filter and we're going to install it on a bucket which I will go over in just a second but they also make a Sawyer mini gravity filter which you can use as well. I will link down to both in the description below. If you're using a bucket and a tap filter, you'll need to install a spigot like this one onto the bucket first. So start by drilling a hole into the bucket that's about the size of the threads on the spigot, and then install the spigot onto the bucket. You may need a wrench to tighten the nut and washer so that it doesn't leak. After that, install the tap filter spigot adapter onto the spigot and then just slide the filter over the adapter and you should be ready to go. And one reason why I like the bucket method is it's very easy to pre-filter and how you go about doing that is that you cover the bucket with a pillowcase and you can secure it in place with something like a bungee or a ratchet strap. And then as you pour the water into it, that'll remove any larger pieces of debris that's present, things like grass, rocks, little gravel, and that'll prevent the filter from getting clogged. After that, open the spigot and that'll let the water flow into a clean container for the next stage. And you want the container to be as clean as possible so that you don't remove contaminants and then put more contaminants right back into it. The flow rate that I got was around 15 to 20 minutes per gallon. It may be a little bit slower with the gravity filter since it's using a mini which has a lower flow rate. And if you're using the bucket method, the more water that you put into the bucket, the faster the flow rate will be because there will be more weight pushing into the filter, thus increasing flow rate. The second stage in my family's water purification plan is to either add bleach to the water or to boil it. And the purpose of this step is to remove any biological contaminants that maybe the Sawyer filter missed. Sawyer filters do a good job removing bacteria and protozoa, but the hollow fiber membranes, the pores in those, are not small enough to filter out viruses. At least with most of their filters, they do have a filter called the .02, which can remove viruses, but as of making this video, it is only available in the international market for things like humanitarian missions. And either using bleach in the proper concentrations or boiling the water will take care of all remaining bacteria, protozoa, and viruses. If you were using bleach, be sure to get just plain, regular, disinfecting and sanitizing bleach. Don't get low splash, don't get scented bleach, anything like that, because that will not work. And the ratio for using bleach is going to be one quarter teaspoon, which comes out to about 16 drops or one and a half milliliters of household liquid bleach to one gallon of kind of cloudy water. If the water that you're using is pretty clean, you can drop that down to about half of that. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and assume that the water that you started off with was pretty disgusting. So I'm just going to stay with the larger amount and any residual bleach that's left over in your water will be taken care of in the next step anyway. Now, one important thing to note is that household bleach in its liquid form 
only has a shelf life of around six months, so that's definitely something that you want to be rotating and not be storing the same bottle or the same bottles for an extended period of time. Once a bottle of bleach reaches its expiration date, just use it to clean the toilet or something and have more coming in every month to make sure that what you're using is as effective as it can be. And another kind of workaround for the short shelf life is to purchase granular calcium hypochlorite. I will include a link to instructions for how to use that granular form of bleach to create a solution that you can use to clean surfaces as well as how to purify drinking water. So I'll put that in the description as well as a link to CDC instructions for how to use bleach to purify water as well. If you're boiling water, make sure that that water stays at a rolling boil for at least a minute, probably a little bit longer if you're a higher altitude because water will boil quicker the higher up that you get. And the third stage in my family's water purification plan is to just use our Berkey countertop filter. And the purpose of this stage is to remove any chemical contaminants that could be present in the water, including the bleach from the last step. The reason why is Berkey's use activated charcoal in their filtering elements and those do an excellent job removing chemicals. If fluoride in your water is something that you're concerned about, then they make additional fluoride filters that you can install as well. These methods are not going to help you make salt water safe to drink. Desalinating water is kind of a completely different animal and it'll probably need to be its own video. Once again, thank you guys for stopping by. I do appreciate it. If you didn't do so earlier, if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button, the notification bell, and the like button, that would be great. I hope to see y'all back. Y'all have a good one. Thanks again.